Awesome, awesome. So, Tim, if you're watching, please send in the Beyond the Wall cast. Uh, and uh, since Tim and I are big fans of this podcast, he's going to come upstairs and join us as well. And uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to give Tim my spot because he has more rational things to say about this than I do because I got nightmares from watching the television show. Are you hearing this? You're more rational than someone. <laughs> when it comes to Games of Thrones. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to work on starting to print out the cards against astronomy. Uh, Carrie, if you're out there, if you can email me, Starstrider, at uh, Gmail, the cards against Mars. Uh, I'm going to work on starting to put that together for the final hour of this show. So get us your cards. We are, and uh, just talking to Michael uh, in the private chat, uh, we want to push to get 20,000 by the end of this. We have an hour and we a can half do this. left. We, we can, can do this. We can totally do this. We have to do this. <laughs> we have to 20. do this for science. For <laughs> science. Hang on, I need to get something first. It's always fun to see you guys at uh, when you change set. <laughs> this is where you need the curtain to drop so you can do the uh, the set change to scene number. Oh, I'm sorry. This is scene number thirty point five. Oh, nice, nice hat. So, so this is actually in tribute to PG. I'm not PG's kidding. not wearing a fedora. PG is usually. We have hey, so many sorry. pictures of I Nicole can't. or I Thank or Vivid you. Muse having uh, stolen PG's gotta, fedoras. Yeah, Go get, get it. Summer. Go get it, sir. <laughs> Kyle, if you're watching, can you bring up more fedoras? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so why don't we go through? So we have some of the cast here. Um, why don't you come through and introduce yourselves? We have uh, Christiana Ellis. Hello, I'm Christiana Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's <And okay. laughs> We have, oh, here we go. Newt, you got the hat, nutty. Say hello. Hang on, we can't hear you. Go up to the, the little yeah, microphone. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got always it. forget about that. <laughs> hello, I'm Nutty. I didn't realize it was fedora time, so I had to quick grab my fedora. Awesome. Awesome. Jesus. And PG Holyfield. P no, I feel left out. I tell you. Oh. Uh, I guess it's my own fault, though, for not having a fedora. I mean, you know, you got to be prepared for, for these things. The, so the here's problem, PG Holyfield, who is the the uh, the lead host of Beyond the Wall. Yeah, of course. the The problem with wearing the fedora is that it's not really conducive to wearing yeah, a awesome. headset. But hey, <laughs> for Nicole, <laughs> we'll do thank it. you, PG. And Earbuds. And there is my favorite guy, Mr. Timothy Legauer. Timothy Legauer, <laughs> who's been up with us the whole time, Woo! helping out the background. Wow. Well. <laughs> I've been trying. I got like 20 minutes of sleep, so. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Still less than I did. I think I got 40, so. Um, yeah, so you guys are part of the cast of Beyond the Wall. We've got uh, two more on their way, hopefully, Viv and Chooch. Uh, why don't no, you give we a don't. brief... Actually, they actually uh, will not make it. They are they are under the weather at the moment. But, oh, they're not mm, going to make it? Yeah. No, unfortunately okay. not. Chooch, okay. Chooch, Chooch is dealing with, with virus of some sort. Oh, okay. So some kind of, of uh, blood <laughs> disease. Some virus. <laughs> So why don't you tell go. us quickly uh, what your podcast is all about? Awesome. Uh, Beyond the Wall is a uh, Game of Thrones podcast. Uh, we are housed at uh, specficmedia.com. Uh, we do a weekly podcast during the uh, HBO season of Game of Thrones. Um, and then we do some extra stuff before and after the season. And... Um, so you can find it, all of our stuff over at specficmedia.com. And um, on iTunes, there's actually two Beyond the Wall podcasts, but we're the ones that have a lot of episodes because they, <laughs> they pod faded after a few, uh, they few episodes. So. Yeah. Um, and we talk on the, on the podcast primarily about the HBO show, um, and we are spoiler-free in terms of only talking about stuff that has happened so far on the show. But most of us have read the books. Yeah, we have a resident we newbie. Yeah, we do. We do talk about we do talk about the books. But yes, like Christiana said, we don't go beyond where we are in the show. So there usually is discussion about how how they treated the the information differently in the books or what's mm -hmm. changed. But we don't go beyond that. So. 
Yes. So I think we're going to stick to the same. Should we stick to the same rules for this one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Definitely. I love the flying fedora. <laughs> Just randomly a fedora comes flying yeah. in. <laughs> um, so <laughs> so uh, we, we uh, have you guys on here. So we're doing this CosmoQuest uh, fundraiser. So CosmoQuest.org slash donate. You can see the link down there. Um, we are raising money for science and citizen science and, <laughs> and, uh, and the, all the education and outreach we do. And being sci-fi fantasy geeks as well, uh, we like to talk about things like Game of Thrones and how you can get the weird seasons. And so for maybe for those who aren't familiar, I think uh, Mike in here, so Mike, we have Michael who's been helping us out as well, uh, isn't as familiar with Game of Thrones. And so Complete maybe, noob. You're awesome. a complete noob. We, we want to know what this has to do with astronomy, right? Why are we here talking about Game of mm -hmm. Thrones and specifically the astronomy in it? You see, I've given up long ago on actually questioning why you talk about things, Nicole. I just kind of go with it. <laughs> hey, you're a smart man. Yeah, yeah. It will. Makes life much easier. <laughs> well, okay, in so, the... Uh, actually, go ahead, Christian. I, 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 I was going to ask who should, <laughs> who should explain, no, but... Uh, go uh, ahead. So the basic reason that I think this, the world of uh, Westeros is the setting and, um, well, it's not the world. Mm -hmm. Westeros is one of the continents. But the world of Game of Thrones is interesting to talk about in this context because the seasons work very differently from those on Earth. In particular, they seem to have only summer and winter as defined seasons. Mm -hmm. But not only are they very long compared to Earth's seasons, meaning they can go for many years, but they are also uh, apparently arbitrarily long. You will usually have a long winter follow a long summer, but not always, and they're not always the same length. Yeah, it's, it doesn't seem predictable. The, the, the Meisters, who were kind of like the observers and, and uh, may have been similar to the ancient astronomers uh, watching the patterns and the seasons, um, tell us when is summer ending, when is winter coming. Um, so they have, they hint that there's something that tells them that the seasons are changing, but it's not predictable and it's not mm -hmm. regular. And of course, here on Earth, we have uh, the, sun, the the Earth is tilted with, um, on its axis with respect to its, this is my demo, uh, with respect to the <laughs> sun. And so every year, we go through four seasons of equal length. It goes around and around in a nearly circular orbit. Um, we get winter, summer, fall, and spring when you expect to get them. Um, and yeah, uh, ancient astronomers used the patterns in the sky in part to figure that out. Um, so we're trying to figure out what, how does the planet that Westeros is on have to be to get these seasons? And there are a couple more things to throw into the mix just to get it out and, and at, the, at the top so it can throw some wrenches into actual, um, you know, reasons that might work. They also have things uh, like the long night where in addition to some of these long winters, some are so bad that they, ha they have darkness for years and years. Mm -hmm. and, and then, of course, you have just the idea of years. They have, you know, sort of a normal or what we would think of as a uh, solar... You know, going around the sun would be a year. At least that's what we assume. I don't know if it's ever that, been That is how they track it. The maesters mm -hmm. in Old Town use uh, what they call mirrorish glass, which is basically telescopes. And they can tell where the sun is, and that's how they pr can tell how long a year has been. Uh, so there is a hint at, yeah. you know, solar, you know, orbiting the sun. Right. But the, the, and the that's seasons how they don't make sense. Of, of the yes. Bowl which is similar to us, right? But the seasons have no bearing on this. And, and yeah. so it's completely right. weird and, and how that might work. Um, so yeah. we are not the first astronomers to actually look into this problem. Uh, for uh, I was on a road trip down to Florida with some of my friends from UVA, and we, we talked about this co at quite at length. Um, but UVA. also, on Sorry. April 1st of this year, on the archive server. So this is where all the physics and astronomy papers uh, are posted before they, they, go, they get published in the journals. On April 1st, there was a paper titled Winter is Coming. And so if you go to archive.arx, 
westeros.iv.org and search Westeros in the search bar. You will get this paper, Winter is Coming, where uh, several astronomers actually did uh, investigate this problem. Um, so, so some things we think about, okay, uh, if it's not in a completely circular orbit, maybe it's in a really elliptical, or, or, or uh, it's in a really eccentric orbit, right? And so maybe the planet that holds west, I don't know, do we have a name for it? We don't have a name for it. So far as we know, it's just known as the known world, mm -hmm. because we don't even know all of the entire planet. Okay. Uh, they have mention of other planets in the solar system, so we know it is a yeah. planet, mm -hmm. but we only have part of this planet, and we only go so far as just below the equator, so mm -hmm. we're not all the way down to the solar, uh, so, solar, sorry, the South Pole. We, we've got an Arctic line, an equator, and really that's about it. Yes. Yeah, so and okay. there... I was just going to say, I think there's four known continents among and many islands, but uh, no one has ever circumnavigated the right. planet that we are yeah. aware of. Pre-circumnavigation. So this is uh, they, they're too busy worrying about their local politics to worry about the the shape of their planet and and its orbit. So we're going to worry about it for them. Uh, although before I get into that, I want to give an update on the donate page. We are almost at eighteen thousand. We are at 17,959. I know you guys can bust it forward a little bit to get to 18,000 in the next few minutes. So let's do that. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure, guys. <laughs> well, we discuss. Um, so uh, you, uh, now, of course, we've seen many non-Earth planets around other stars, right? And so it could be on a really eccentric orbit, right? So that'll pull right. it really far out. Um, yeah, and for uh, the way that I like to uh, describe for uh, people that aren't so familiar with astronomy, the eccentric orbit is basically think of it as football shaped. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so yes. it doesn't quite follow what Earth does. Uh, there are seven uh, planetary objects, they call them wanderers, not planets, in uh, where the sky. Come, came from, so yeah. Yep. And uh, uh, they, of course, in Westeros, attribute it to their seven gods. Uh, hang on, I'm just reading quickly. So, um, th this doesn't quite work all that well because um, five, I mean, you get, uh, in fact, that's a lot of people think that the Earth is further away from the sun in winter, uh, but that, of course, doesn't work out because the different hemispheres have winter and summer at the same time. You get, yep. <laughs> I need you to check what I'm yes, saying, yes. right? It's like, yeah, I've been, <laughs> um, so it could be that it's it's in this really eccentric orbit, but even then, I think it would be regular? That's that's one of the biggest problems that I've run into because I'm looking at it and I'm trying to figure, is it because it's at an extreme tilt that the seasons last longer? Is it because it's on the eccentric orbit? You know, all of these different things. Even if you are to say that there are longer climate cycles, you'd think that they'd be more regular. You wouldn't have mm -hmm. a short summer or a short winter or a long summer or a long winter. Um, one theory that I've come up with with uh, my husband is the idea of uh, meteorological uh, impacts creating dust clouds or volcanic eruptions creating dust clouds to make it seem like there's more of a winter that perhaps their summer has small seasons within it but then if there's some sort of dust going up in the in the air it then creates kind of like winter-like conditions and that maybe it's not exactly regular but the maesters can kind of predict when this is coming. Uh, one thought that we had to ask was uh, what would the impact of a comet coming too close to a, a planet's atmosphere due to a planet's climate because we just saw in the books and in the, mo in the show that the red comet went past and then all the maesters say well winter's coming. Don't take the only thing I was going to talk about. No, I'm just oh, kidding. sorry, <laughs> you're futzing with your hat. I was just changing hats. <laughs> no, um, I don't know, but that—that's only in this particular instance, right? They—they've seen comets before, but never a red comet. Um, right. But I don't think that I don't. I just can't see a comet being so small having enough of an impact on the atmosphere to, to be something that. Exists. I think that's a coincidence. What, what if there were impacts happening somewhere like outside of our, you know, like if, 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 known world. if our known world is only a subset of the surface and there are major impacts happening like on the other side, right. um, 
is that something that could potentially have some of the effect? One one thing that is sometimes observed is they notice that there are um, severe storms and rough seas in the in the narrow period that they call autumn, which is when winter is starting. They don't really call it a whole season. It's not like a year long, but there's like a period which of seems like a months maybe that they say the the storms get especially rough. Now I'm 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 digging a little bit further than where the show is, but this won't be a spoiler. I I do vaguely remember them saying the days are getting shorter though from old town. Yes. That wouldn't be affected by the comet unless I think you'd need something bigger. You'd need a, a binary planet. You'd need a, a binary star. Something that would have to that would kick it off. Hmm. More, well, in a more, a more regularly eccentric way. Yeah, I thought of the binary oh. star system, but then you'd think they'd mention something about having two suns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so, so one thing that I've looked for is: do they ever mention having a moon? Uh, that's another point I have. Uh, they do yes. talk about a moon, yes. and the Dothraki have a legend that dragons came because there used to be two moons, and one came too close to uh, the sky, and it came down, and it hatched, and that's where dragons came from. And so the idea that I had was, well, perhaps there used to be two moons, and one, uh, you know, fell out of orbit, came too close, something like that might have happened, and because they're missing one of their moons... Their their orbit and their tilt are all messed up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that's pretty or good. That, that could be a source of a continuing source of debris as well. If there yeah. are uh, debris clouds that are left behind from that dragon episode. About, here's here's my theory, and of course we must uh, say the George R. R. Martin's take on this, and he said this in interviews that yeah. hey, it's fantasy, it's magic, so. Yeah. You know, he, he, he hasn't come up with his own, but we, you know, we're here to talk about the science of it. Is this, this one section of the paper, so they go through pollutants, they go through axial tilt, they go through eccentricity, they actually graph the length of, of the seasons, um, and then there's a section 1.4 <laughs> magic. Yep, this would work. Sweet. <laughs> I like that. But my right. idea is a, a variable star. Ooh, ah, that's, that that's actually what I was going to... What's up? That wouldn't affect the length of the day. Hmm. And do we know for sure that the master, Maesters in Old Time, I think that's later on, that the Maesters in Old Time now, town. As a total noob, I think I know the answer. Oh. Ooh, cool. Are any of these Maesters named Velikovsky? <laughs> <laughs> None of the ones we've met in the story so far. There you go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he, he, he lives on the other side know. of the world. Explain that one before I die laughing. <laughs> Uh, Velikovsky, okay, would it be fair to call him a nut or a crank? Um, <laughs> you, 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 yeah. We were not a manners this long into the broadcast. Uh, Velikovsky had a proposal that uh, Venus was actually born out of uh, Jupiter. Jupiter spun too fast or it had uh, uh, a wart or something. And um, Venus kind of spit out from this uh, great cosmic planetary size zit, went screaming around the inner solar system back and forth, stopped the Earth rotating, causing most of the biblical uh, uh, things that we've seen in, in the classic Hebrew and Christian Bible, you know, the Earth stopping, rolling backwards, sun stop, et cetera, et cetera, until finally it happened to end up in an almost perfectly circular orbit between Earth and Mercury. It's, it's, it's a Christmas miracle. Ah, uh, when planets go through puberty. Yes, it's, it's sad. <laughs> well, I want to jump in and say that the donations are up to seventeen thousand nine hundred and eighty-four. Woo! So we Sixteen dollars. Can we add Keep Bitcoin those gold dragons coming in? So want to make twenty thousand? We'd like to make two hundred thousand, but can we make twenty thousand? Can yes, we add please. the bit? Can we add the bitcoins to total to that number? Is that included oh, or is that no, separate? No, no, the bitcoins are separate. You're right. So That's three hundred and twenty-ish. A bitcoin. So do. Bitcoins count as maybe uh, iron bravosi coins? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, <my goodness>. yeah. <laughs> oh, wouldn't it be nice if we knew the uh, the Valerian or bravosi word for science? Because then we could have all men must study. It wouldn't have to be all men in this context. You know, it's a patriarchal yeah. society, but Very you know, it's an old. Society. But the uh, <laughs> but you know, Valar Mogulis means uh, all men must die, and then Valar Doharis is all must, men must serve, but we should have one that should 
uh, all must all do science. All men must science. All men must science. I wonder if that's like really etched into the walls of Old Town. That's where the maesters <laughs> study, by the way. Yes. <laughs> the Citadel, yes. Yes, the Citadel. Um, and and so I, I had wondered about the idea of um, like variable star as well. And, and I wonder, it's, it's hard to know, especially because uh, of, of the magic fudge factor, that there might be some details that are inconsistent with any particular theory because he's kind of making stuff up. But what I think, so I think what we have to imagine, though, is science at the level that it is for the people there, you can't necessarily trust every single observation equally because, mm -hmm. for example, they have not found a pattern, but they also have no computers. And mm -hmm. so it could be that it is some complex pattern that is not detectable, and especially if it on, varies on the order of generations, they would have a very difficult time um, you know, capturing that and detecting what that pattern might be. So it might seem arbitrary to them, but it might actually be some sort of just second or third order wobble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and one thing that I don't think is a spoiler to say is that we've already seen a little bit of um, the the maesters in Old Town and the Citadel discouraging certain areas of study. For instance, um, maesters that have been kicked out for studying magic, even though there is some magic that's acceptable, you know, with the Valerian chain and so forth, and uh, you'll later find out, that I doubt this will be in the show, about being able to light a candle that's unlightable and all this other stuff. So it makes me wonder also if perhaps certain areas of study that would be too close to in this magic world, uh, too close to figuring out the secrets to the climate and why seasons last so long, if maybe that was being discouraged. And so we've got a bit of science being quashed here. Purposely unknown. And, and, and they're, like uh, you were saying, they're not uh, terribly good about their record keeping. This is something you talked about in a previous episode. Mm -hmm. um, we were goofing on this. Is is uh, okay? So spoiler alert: If you <coughs> haven't seen the TV show, this is, this is a spoiler and you alert. plan to, and you plan to go watch it. It's awesome. Put your fingers um, in your ears for a little bit. In case you get nightmares. Dragon glass mm -hmm. kills White Walkers. This is kind of important, but everyone's forgotten. Yeah, mm -hmm. like these are like the biggest scourge to humanity, and this is the one thing mm -hmm. that kills them. And you made a point. About every book. Every it book should start every pages. book, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I loved book it. Every book should have that written in the front pages. In fairness, <laughs> in fairness to them, it has been several thousands of years since yeah. this was last relevant to them. But, you so. know, Sam found all the old <laughs> books. None of them say this. But, yeah, I mean, in the show, even Sam's figured out the Black Gate all on his own. And even in the books, he didn't know that much. But, uh, you know, Wizard Sam d didn't know about Dragonglass ahead of time. So you're right. It's it's just one of those things that kind of got forgotten. And I'm sure I'm sure it was written down somewhere and someone's transcribing a book. And then he's like, Dragonglass kills the others. Oh, uh, yeah, this is just more poetic license. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that part out. It's a little too flowery. Well, well yeah, that could be part of it. It could yeah. be that because many people, it's been so long, yeah. they've actually legitimately stopped believing that it was ever true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, what I was, yeah that's what I was thinking. Is that they, in the stories, it's just fairy tales to the kids, you know? Mm -hmm. yep. Or horror stories, I guess, is more well, accurate. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, so here, stories. here's a question. Um... Should maybe instead of dismissing the magical elements, we should actually be considering those as, you know, its existence in this world needs to be evidence of something. Is there po is it possible that there would be some like higher dimensional phenomena going on well, here? I, I don't know very much about this. Fields, right, like a gravitational field, and and it's getting mm -hmm. stronger because you have winter coming and you have a comet, so you have an astronomical. <laughs> Event, mm -hmm. something happening in the sky, happening at the same time winter is coming, happening at the same yeah. time the dragons are waking. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. there's some fluctuation in the magical field. Okay, Back you magical said magic. I heard magnetic field. No, ma <laughs> no magical field. Did this close enough for some people? <laughs> <laughs> well, but I was wondering though. I mean, certainly, I I think 
it might be true that conventional Newtonian orbital physics is not sufficient to mm -hmm. explain what we see, but is it possible that there is either like a quantum or some higher spatial dimensional influence that could have some effect, or is that just something we would have no way to really know at all? Oh, I just like using the word I, quantum. I, I or think, magic. I, I <laughs> well, think I'm much so. So reading the books, this was something that deeply bothered me. Okay. Um, and, and so I have to admit, the place I always went was, well, I kept missing the moon, apparently, but I was listening to the Audible books. Um, if the moon is small enough, it can still have an unstable wobble, and there could be resonances set up with the moon such that the, the uh, periodicity of the wobble depends on how it lines up with the moon's orbit. The mm -hmm. resonances are, are ultimately predictable. Uh, and regular, as to some extent. It Isn't depends on how long the, the ultimal beat frequency is. Think of how long Compared it Compared to the generations. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, yeah. and, and it may be that if the wobble is complex enough that they <laughs> just haven't detected the pattern. <laughs> yeah. So it could be regular in just a way that they have not been able to detect. Speaking it's of external influences, there is some evidence for, I'm trying not to be spoilery, but in Dance with Dragons, we're going to learn about some other factors yeah. that aren't quite factors yet, but they, they are. I mm -hmm. think they are. I believe what we learn in Dance with Dragons tells us that there are other factors and a bit of internal disturbance. Mm. Okay. So, so are, keep are reading. You, are you talking about what happened in Valyria? Nope. No, okay. I'm 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 talking about what happens beyond the wall. Okay. Okay. I, I'm I I'm not sure where you. But you okay. Up yeah, I don't know if <laughs> we can't discuss it without Something... spoilers. <laughs> it sounds volcanic to me. Happened in Valeria. Uh, yeah, yes, so, that too. So it is certainly true that the most advanced um, that any society in the in this known world has ever been was ancient Valyria, which is now gone because they were all the like the entire landmass was mostly obliterated yeah. to the point where um, it, it used to be like part of a continent and now it is like a new sea and a chain of islands that nobody sails that way because it's cursed and bad things happen to you. It could be radioactive in some way, for example. Mm. Because people do talk about it being like cursed, like even just sailing through there, even if you make it out okay, right, right, right. you're still in trouble. And so it it's some sort of a cataclysmic event happened there. And, so um, it's a lot like Jersey. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's just like going through the Hudson. Okay, okay. I, I'm starting to get this program. I, I can what almost would, crack this. What would high levels of methane in the so atmosphere do? So we're not, we're not going to solve this in, in the next eight minutes. So have you... I disagree. I, I, so I, I know your episodes are typically longer than the TV show. Yes. <laughs> and, and so now that we've seen the season premiere, after you film the episode related to the season premiere, how about having the group of us on to do this more in depth for a little bit longer because so you know season? we want to hit twenty thousand dollars so <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah we're at eighteen thousand and fifty on the uh, on the uh, regular money scale and then you add in the so money. so we can make a promise here if we reach twenty thousand dollars we will do a special episode for as long as you people want it <laughs> or until we pass out <laughs> oh my god, day people, I love their show, I want to be on it. <laughs> well, we'll just make out, well, make sure to pass out well, and shift so we can keep going. We'll pass out and shift. Yes. That's what we've been and doing we'll, all day. Yeah. And we'll have to <laughs> come up with a good uh, drinking game, you know, so we can do shots at period periodic moments. Um, <laughs> one thing I, I will be doing, this, this will not be a um, immediate thing, but, uh, just because I can't do too much, but what I will be doing... Uh, anybody that buys a t-shirt from or any other piece of merchandise from uh, our website, which is specficmedia.com, but the actual website for the store is specficmedia.spreadshirt.com. Anything that is purchased from there from now until the end of the year 
Uh, any of the profit from that will go to Cosmo Quest. Oh my so, god! Um, we may be only be talking about like five T-shirts. I don't uh, care. <laughs> but people, have but, you seen the generous, artwork for that you. T-shirt? <laughs> it's amazing artwork, and I'm on. Yes. It. So any again, go to um, Spreadshirt. Excuse me. Spec. Was it Spreadshirt dot Media dot com? No. It is dot Spreadshirt dot com. And uh, there's a bunch of products there, and if you you know you'll mainly see that our art is for the show is you know on the t-shirts. If there's any product on there that doesn't that isn't represented, and you want to have a, you know a coffee mug or something, just let us know, and I'll put that up there, and you can buy it, and uh, we'll we'll do that for the rest of the year. It's a dragon yeah. dragon doll. Ugh. Thank so you. I, I've got another thing I can um I can offer too is that That's right weird. now I am. I am working. Uh, it's it's going slow, but I'm I'm getting there on Space KC season two, which is my uh, my science fiction comedy audio drama. And right now, I actually have a number of cameo roles available, and so maybe a cameo role with at least one speaking line, possibly more, would be available to anyone who donates at least fifty dollars. Until we get to twenty thousand, that Ooh. would be awesome. So you get for fifty dollars, uh, you get uh, a role in in Christiana's story, and yes. for the proceeds from Specfic Media's uh, spread shirt site, uh, you go to Cosmo Quest as well. So you guys are awesome. Thank you. Quick question. <laughs> yeah. Now I, I got to throw in here too. Quick ah! question. Uh, can you track who's donated from the beginning of this hour yes. till into the next half hour? For every single donation. Excellent. Yes. I am going to ask for a random five donators and just random, no matter how much you've donated. Uh, I will make pop art for, uh, you, you'd have to send me a picture of yourself, but I will make a pop art icon for random five people that donate Sweet. for this hour. That's so awesome. get those donations in. That's original yeah. <laughs> art. That's so, awesome. So if the group of you could email all of this to us, <laughs> yes. we can wake for 33 hours because we got up two hours before the recording started. <laughs> That's a lot of hours. Yes. <laughs> we're astronomers. We're hardy. <laughs> Now, All the hours. Minute, what we're going to do in our last section was inspired Ooh. by you guys. There's oh, PG's yeah, there's Ooh. PG's uh, pop art. That's cool. PG that's talks cool. so they can cool. see you. So that's, that's the type of thing that uh, you'll see if you, uh, or that you'll get if you are one of those. Who, uh, that's very cool. That is wonderful. I love it. I love Pull that it. up there. Not getting on the, oh, I guess we are fortunate to have such talented, talented friends willing to help us out. So thank you so much. So uh, you're when, very welcome. When we were at Balticon, the, I'm stealing your mic. Go for it. Ah. When we were at Balticon, um, you guys ha handed out Words Against Humanity cards that were customized to Game of Thrones, and then ah. did nothing with them. I was confused, <laughs> delighted, yet confused. So yes. I decided to steal ruthlessly your idea and then actually do something with the cards. So we've been soliciting cards against astronomy uh, submissions the, the entire uh, time and realized that most of the people think this is a great idea and then don't submit cards. They donate money, which we actually want more than we want the cards. Um, but we are going to be playing in our final hour um, cards against Astronomy. Oh, we have Sandy to come in really. Quickly. Yeah, and so we have us. Uh, we have Sandy coming in for 15 minutes while we do the transition, and while I cut out the cards, I just finished printing. <laughs> and and Sandy is an asteroid researcher, and you guys are welcome to hang out if you want. Um, Sandy is an asteroid re researcher who works down at Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico, and she's one of those folks that's helping to protect the planet Earth, uh, one radar measurement at a time, essentially. And she participated in this year's Fame Lab regional finals down uh, in Houston, Texas. I got to be one of the judges for this. It's uh, 
co-sponsored by the U.S. Geological Society uh, or National Geographic, rather. Sorry, National Geographic, not USGS. National Geographic. And they're looking to try and identify the next generation of great scientists talent and uh, she was the one who went on to the next round and we've asked her to do the presentation that she did there and talk a little bit about FameLab. Awesome. So Sandy, we have sent you uh, we have sent you the um, the invite on Google Plus so you can see it there and I've also sent you the link on Google Hangouts. So uh, come on in when you're ready. I'll switch yeah. mics with you. Um, there's a stand for that one. We have two mics going. So this is our last two segments now. We'll have um, a segment from Sandy down at Arecibo. If you saw the segment with Ryan Lynch, he had a picture from of his group at Arecibo. And I wanted to be like, squee, we get that in the background whenever we talk to Sandy. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Before, um, before we talk to Sandy, yeah. just need to note that we're entering hour 32. Hour 32. This, this is the very last hour. Oh my God! Look at him! Look at this Thankfully. one! Look at this one! Yeah. <laughs> yes, well, thank Nicole, you. I, I need to go, but I did, did want to say one of my great pleasures of, of Balticon was I got to sit at the CosmoQuest and Astronomy Cast table, and because uh, Pamela was very nice to to allow me have a little corner to sell my books, and right. uh, so I got to sound like I knew a little bit about science for, <laughs> for a few hours. So awesome. that was fun. Awesome. Yes, I know all about citizen science. Let me tell you about CosmoQuest. So that was... <laughs> Everybody that gets too close gets roped in. So <laughs> that was fun. That you guys have a great last hour. It's it's like Wonderful there's work. some sort of a mysterious force that as as masses get closer, there's this, this <laughs> attraction. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's I, what, magic. What could we call it? Magic. 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 <laughs> oh, right. Magic. So, so Christiana Magnets. Is, is, she's one of the authors who's part of our free Wi-Fi on Mars yeah. series. Yes. I read her story last week. Uh, we're working on getting all of these out in audio on 365 Days of Astronomy. Uh, PG has been a long-term friend, friend of the shows. And uh, the podcasting community is awesome, and we're just getting to know Nutty, and we're going to be finding ways to su suck Nutty into everything. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead. Suck that, is in, an, and, uh... that is a, that is a audio gif. <laughs> <laughs> audio, uh, audio and uh, I, I bring with me a plague Excuse doctor, me. so it's always fun. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, guys, well, so have a wonderful last hour. i got to go. I'm All gonna right, have to step you. out too. My thank father is waiting, but uh, I'll be back to watch the oh the the cards against astronomy. Yes. Keep those Looking donations coming. Thank you, thank you so much, you guys. Right, guys. And yes, let's get to twenty thousand so Pamela and I can come on their show and, <laughs> and I can continue to fangirl out at them because it's fun. And yeah, yeah, Tim and I, um, we we watch your show every week because you have such an in-depth knowledge of the books and the show and point out so much that we miss while watching and reading and so thank you so much for helping us enjoy Game of Thrones even more. And and I just watch it periodically because this way I know what people are talking about and I don't have to watch things like this in their ears. someone's rewarded by my nerdgasms. <laughs> uh, here's just a gratuitous corgi shot. Yay corgi! corgi. Yay Luna! <laughs> oh man. So good. So I. <laughs> Goodbye, we, everyone. We Bye. love this. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you, oh, guys. It's great. <laughs> and keep Bye. tweeting, keep retweeting, keep sharing, <laughs> keep resharing. Yes. Uh, Facebook has us confused <laughs> with this event. We do have an event page posted.